welcome everybody. So we had some technical issues to start the day, so we're a little bit later than usual, but we are here. I hope that everybody can hear me. Uh, pop in the chat if you are battling with anything. And I am just going to go straight into welcoming our wonderful speaker for today. Rob Stewart is the Head of Technology at Dragon Consulting. Dragon Consulting is a wonderful marketing consultancy in South Africa. And uh, Rob's well, job there is nothing. to help us use technology to better our marketing processes and systems. So he is going to be teaching us all about leveraging technology today, but specifically artificial intelligence. And I'm very excited. So welcome, Rob. Thank you very much for joining us. And thank you for battles this morning. Uh, we still we still there it would seem <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you Tamron. Uh, hi everyone yep uh, we're going to be focusing on uh, specifically artificial intelligence and um, some of the things that have come up um, literally in the last six months or so um, <clears throat> since uh, chat GPT launched uh, November of last year now uh, the world and AI has kind of gone mad um, so before I kick off, I think what I'd, I'd like to do, just give you a lay of the land, what I'm going to be doing. So I'm just going to give you a brief introduction around AI, <clears throat> how it can help um, businesses, current applications that uh, AI are being used in. Um, then I'm going to go through some specific examples and tools that um, we use. We don't use all of them, but um, certainly a lot of them we do use just to give you an idea as to how many tools are actually out there for businesses and business owners to use um, to improve their business and hopefully grow their business. Um, that's the purpose of today. Um, it'd be very difficult for me to go into these tools in any great detail because there are literally thousands of them. Um, and I've kind of cherry picked the ones that I think would be of value. Um, and quite interesting. And, I, and I've given you right at the end, if we have time, there's a, a short uh, little video I'd like to play, which gives you an idea of where AI is going and what it's capable of. It's uh, at first glance, it's quite a cute video and you think, wow, that's actually quite nice. And when you start thinking about it a little bit deeper, uh, I think you start, well, if you're anything like me, you start perhaps thinking, well, where is this going to go and where is it going to end? So I think uh, let's start off with um, actually the difference between AI and a robot. Now, um, in South Africa, we call traffic lights robots. So um, no, that's not what we call them in South Africa. <clears throat> we call a robot is a, other than a traffic light, it is also, and the, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, a robot is an automated machine that replaces human effort. So um, on manufacturing lines, where specifically car manufacturing, where you see these huge arms welding uh, cars together, putting on doors, those are all managed by robots and because they're really a machine that's replacing human effort. Obviously, in the past, um, when Ford first started making cars, its production line had people doing exactly those tasks. They've now been replaced by robots. So AI is the next level up from that. And essentially, again, um, using Encyclopedia Britannica's uh, definition, the artificial intelligence is the ability of a digital computer or a computer controlled, controlling a robot, which is quite interesting, to perform tasks commonly associated with intelligent beings. And they don't say human beings, they just say intelligent beings. And the difference there is one around the intelligence and how it defines intelligence. And to do that, it makes use, or the computer programming makes use of algorithms. And the algorithms give it the flexibility to learn certain situations, how to handle things within those situations and learn from that process. So when it handles a situation like that or similar to that, it will then be able to deal with that particular situation as opposed to grinding to a halt. 
that's really what differentiates it from a robot. Because a robot, if uh, it was meant to take a door and put it onto the car, if that door wasn't there, it would just stop. It wouldn't know what to do because there was no door there. In AI, in a situation like that, it would say, okay, something's wrong here. What do I do? Oh, the next door is possibly in another box. Go and look in that box. So it's that kind of intelligence that we start building into uh, computers and systems that then take the robots to the next level. So if we have a look at uh, where AI has been, and AI has certainly been around long before ChatGPT launched uh, in November of last year. In fact, there's been a, um, and I'll cover it in the, in the chat, but there has been another a large language model, which is essentially what ChatGPT is. It's been around since um, 2020. Um, ChatGPT was launched in November 2022. So two years before ChatGPT, there has been another large language mo model available uh, and being used successfully. So it was just really the, the launch around the ChatGPT that kind of got everyone going absolutely gaga about it. So let's have a look at really where AI can help. And if we look at the amount of data in our uh, modern world, um, certainly it's become very difficult to get one, gather all this information, and two, then make sense of all this information that we as business and business owners can actually make use of. If we look at Facebook as an example, they have... Um, literally hundreds of data points on individuals. They know exactly what websites we like going to. They know how old we are, what our interests are, what jobs we have, all those kinds of things. It keeps track of us. And it then uses that information to then start, for example, promoting or sending ads to us. So you find an ad in you, I'm sure it's happened to you before where you'd go onto a website and not 10 minutes later, if you're on Facebook, suddenly information about that particular website that or related to that website or similar to that website that you've just been visiting will pop up in your feed. And that's because Facebook is now tracking you and seeing where you're going and saying, okay, this person is interested in aviation as an example and will start running ads to you because it's, you've shown interest in aviation. So those are the one of the things that um, AI is used for making sense out of data and using that data for business benefit. Another way is when we're talking about a particular service or product and trying to enhance that product or service. And a good example of that, for example, a good example of that would be Netflix. So we all know that, um, and that's still why Netflix is around because it's been struggling over the last uh, couple of months, but we know that when we go into Netflix, we have our own little profile. And through our history of watching videos, it knows what kind of movies we'd like. And as a result, it would then suggest more movies for us that perhaps we would like, because there are obviously hundreds, if not thousands of movies that can be watched on Netflix. And to go and try and find one specifically can be quite a tedious task. So Netflix uses AI to say, okay, this is what we know about Rob. So let's show Rob more about some more movies or series that he may or may not be interested in. And that's the exact reason why we in fact have two profiles in our household. Um, Michelle, my wife, likes uh, the crime and, you know, murdering people and how to cover up the murder and mysteries. So anyone uh, wanting to see how uh, to murder someone goes onto her profile. And if they want to see an action movie or something about action, they come onto my profile. And that's how products or services can be improved using AI. Uh, Amazon, as an example, does exactly the same or take a lot if you're in South Africa, it does exactly the same, where they recommend, they know your profile, they know your history, and they would make recommendations on their products or service. So we can also then make products themselves, and so not only the service or product that we're providing, 
uh, better, but they can in fact enhance the actual product. Um, for example, if we look at Tesla, um, obviously there is quite a lot of AI within Tesla. And one that come to mind is really the auto dryer facility where you put in a destination and it would then automatically drive along its um, destin its route to get to that destination with no input from a human driver. Um, another example, and unfortunately a rather tragic example, is with the Boeing uh, 737 MAX in 2019 and 2020. Um, they had some technology, AI technology, that was meant to assist the pilots if um, the plane was about to stall. And if it was about to stall, in other words, lose enough speed so that it won't stay in the air anymore, what it would do in that situation, it would um, lower the nose to gather um, speed. And uh, that obviously went horribly wrong. And as a result, the pilots started then fighting with this technology to try and keep the plane up because the plane thought it was stalling, so it put its nose down, which it wasn't. And then the pilots would fight to try and get this plane back up. And eventually it was doing a, a porpoise through the sky and, and tragically uh, almost 400 people were killed. Um, so that's where AI and technology uh, went horribly wrong. Um, a rather uh, amusing example of technology is in toothbrushes. Um, there is technology available, AI technology that understands and knows what and how you are using your toothbrush. So it would log on your app to say, okay, uh, you spend too much time or too little time on your left side. You need to spend uh, more time on, your, on the left side of your mouth and you neglecting your the front of your teeth. You know, it's, it's able to detect to that degree how you are using its toothbrush. And that's enhancement of a particular product or service. If we look at um, actual service within an operational point of view and a process point of view, uh, about two years ago, we developed a chatbot solution for one of our clients in the UK. Um, they're a large um, supply and manufacturer of mats. And they had a, a call center that would basically receive the calls and requests and essentially just pass it on via email to the actual uh, company themselves. So they were just a really a, a post box for queries, client queries, which really didn't help the actual company itself and as a result didn't help the clients. So what our chatbot did is sat on the front end of the website and anyone wanting to know anything, uh, for example, does the company ship overseas or does the company ship to New York or to Germany or to Australia or wherever the client was, the chatbot was automatically able to detect that this was the question, this was what we call the intent of the question. And as a result, if that was the intent, then this is the answer that we should provide. So it would then give pre-formatted answers based on the intent, and it recognized that intent through what we call NLP, or uh, Neuro Linguistic Processing. So it would know that that's what the person was asking, and as a result would then give that result. That is all driven through AI and making um, businesses better through AI. So what I'm gonna do now, if I'm going to jump into a couple of examples, I'm going to share my screen and run through some of the tools that are out there. And as I said, there are literally thousands of tools. These are just some of the more popular ones. So if you'll bear with me for a second, I'm just going to share my screen. And we want to share the screen. All right, so hopefully everyone can see the new screen. Tamron, yes, thumbs up. Yep, fantastic. Okay, so the first one I'm going to cover is a tool called Descript. Now, there are a number of video uh, tools out there. One of the very popular tools out there for video is one called CapCut, um, produced by ByteDance, so the guys who do TikTok. 
Um, but that is really around just editing the actual video itself. What the Descript does is it takes it to the next level with regard to not only just editing or being able to edit your video uh, and audio that's attached to that video, but more intelligently, it's able to edit the actual content with regards to the text that's being said or commented on in a particular video. So if you have a video and you're wanting to add a voice over to that particular video, you can certainly do that. So for example, here we have a manatee swimming through the Everglades or wherever manatees, I'm, I'm assuming they come from um, the Amazon. So somewhere in the Amazon, a, a manatee swimming through the water and someone wanted to put a voice over onto a video. They could simply write up text for that and it would then automatically either use a predefined um, voiceover or they in fact could use their own so in fact they could train the system they could train Descript on their own voice and they suggest to give it uh, an hour's worth of audio so you write or read uh, something into Descript that's an hour long and would know how you speak and how you um, say certain words or inflict on certain words and it would then carry that uh, learning into actually recreating your voice. So all you need to then do is give it copy and would automatically read that copy out in your voice. The other nice thing is if you are now doing a video or if you've done a video, it can automatically extract that video from it. And by simply extracting that video from the text from that video, you can then go and edit that video on the fly. But you edit the text, you're not, you're not actually editing the video. And it would automatically change the, um, the sound, the audio on that particular video for you. So the first one of the first things it can do is it can really um, enhance your sound. And I'm going to run... A uh, little example here, so... Please visit LibriVox.org. That's L-I-B-R-I-V-O-X dot org. Cameron, can Please you hear that? Please visit LibriVox.org. That's L-I-B-R-I-V-O-X dot org. So you the can hear that. The rainbow is the division of white light into many beautiful colors. The rainbow is the division of white light into many beautiful colors. So you can see how it enhances the original audio. It does that automatically for you. There's no fancy tools that you need to um, flick or switch. It does that on the fly. The other one is the word removal. And this is really, really good. I know uh, Michelle went and did a, a chat to um, Toastmasters and they, are, they in fact count the ums that you have in your presentation. And this is a perfect way to remove those ums. So this is what it is before. So these nuggets are um, made from chicken, but they're made to um, 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 emulate the taste of like like non-chicken nuggets. So, so these nuggets are made from chicken, but they're made to emulate the taste of non-chicken nuggets. So these nuggets are made from chicken, but they're made to emulate the taste. So it does it automatically for it. You just tell it this is what you want it to remove and it will automatically go and find that content and remove it for you. The overdub uh, facility is something really good from a, um, and this is how it sets itself apart from all the other video um, applications or tools. What it can do here is it can replace words um, with natural uh, content. So you type in wherever it said, as an example, where it said chicken, um, chicken nuggets, you want it to be beef nuggets, you just go and type in beef nuggets and it would automatically replace chicken with the word beef. And you can select a, either a pre-selected vo voice or as I said, you can in fact use your own voice. So type to um, generate speech. So this is a test online. Okay. So... I have a number of voices I can choose. I have Nancy. This is a test online. And I have Malcolm. This is a test online. 
So it automatically creates the content for you, um, or rather creates the audio for you. You just simply type in the text, and if already you have a text set out and you, you've already done your um, conversion, you want to now go and change a word, it will automatically go and change that word for you, even if it's something you haven't said before. So in the above example, where they're talking about the uh, manatees, they're talking about manatees uh, being the hunter, and no, they don't, they think that's a bit aggressive, they can change it by saying uh, the Cadillac, using the manatees, the Cadillac of the river. And nowhere have they used the word Cadillac, but it is automatically able to generate that word. So this is the power that Descript has. And this is all driven through AI. Another great tool that we use, and just so you know, uh, Tamron has all the links to these applications. And if she hasn't already made them available or making them available, she, I'm sure she will make them available to everyone. So if you want to come back at a later stage, and have a look at these tools, you certainly can go uh, into these different applications and have a look. So the next one is Tome, and Tome is where you're able to automatically generate a presentation. What it does is it creates the content through AI, and in fact also creates the actual imagery for you. You simply go in, you want to create a new uh, presentation, you click Create, and it's going to ask you, well, what do you want to create? So I want to create a presentation about um, living on the moon. Um, what will it be like? Okay, and go ahead and create it. So what it's doing now is it's creating the entire presentation for you. Content, um, table of contents, the imagery, the whole trip, it does it for you. There's absolutely nothing that you need to do. What you can then do once it's done, you can then go through and actually edit the content of that particular video. So you can see it's already starting to generate the images. We have this content here. I quite like that, so I'm going to keep that, and I'm going to say keep. So what it's done now is it's created this particular page, and if I want to create the entire um, presentation, I can go in and actually come up to the top here and say create a presentation. So um, what – go back here. Great, so I was creating a page. I want to create a presentation. What, what will it be like living on the on the Okay, so what it's doing now is it's creating the entire presentation. So it's not just creating one page for me, it's now creating the entire presentation. Uh, it gives you, this is the um, content, so the introduction, why I live on the moon, etc. Yep, that all looks good. And now it's going to go ahead and create the presentation. So it's going to create all the slides for me. You can see as they start going through. I don't have to do anything. It will go ahead and do it. In fact, uh, probably would have been a good idea to do it for this um, presentation itself. But uh, for now, let me kind of do things on the fly because this is what it's all about. So there you go. It's now in a matter of seconds, created the presentation for me, content and pictures. So if I go up to the top here, it gives me the introduction, there's the introduction, gives me text over here, it gives me the imagery, text, and I can go in and then edit this text. If I want to then send this presentation to someone, I simply share a link to them so they can then also see this presentation. So this is a great way if you're looking, one, to create a presentation or two, looking for ideas to create a presentation, this is certainly a quick way to do it. The next tool I want to show is Runway ML, and this is a really comprehensive um, tool. So there are a whole lot of things it can do, and I'm going to highlight just some of the things it can do. 
So the nice thing here, what M, um, Runway does, is it actually gives you the facility to edit video, or in fact, also create video through using AI. And we can see here, simply through a prompt, a volcano uh, erupting, it'll automatically go and create a video clip for you. You obviously would uh, dictate how long this clip must be, and it would then go and create that clip for you. If you want to generate an image, and we'll come through and I'll show you other image generators a little bit later, but if you want to generate an image, you just type in a cinematic still of a man or a photo of a woman smiling, etc. It would create those images for you, all through the use of AI. If you're wanting to expand images, here you have um, flowers. You then just select the text or border around that you want to expand, and it will automatically go and expand uh, that particular image for you. If you want to reimagine an image, you put in a photo, and then you go and select certain prompts, and it will then create, using that original photo that you used, create an alternative of that particular um, photo based on your prompt. We also have uh, custom models, so you can actually go in and give them a number of photographs of a particular thing or person or whatever it is that you want to train it on, and then prompt it to give you variations of that, and it will come up with those uh, examples. So here we are, it's learned, and now it's giving you, based on your prompts, variations with that person or whatever the object is inside it. If you want to, and this is a really great um, tool, if you want to remove something from your video, you have, and this is really, really difficult, if anyone's done any level of video editing, this little feature is probably one of the main features why people use a Runway ML, and that's to remove certain objects or whatever it is within video. You simply go and highlight whatever it is that you want to remove, and it'll take it out. So someone doesn't want these birds here in their video, and they simply take it out. If you highlight it, it's simple as that. Here, if you want to make a slow-mo of a movie, now, if you understand the movie technology, um, each uh, mo motion is taken through a particular single image. And the more images that you have in a specific uh, a specific time period, you're able to then slow that image down. So if you do that video down, and if you don't have enough images in between, so if you've only, if you film me, typically you would film between 24 and 30 frames a second, to slow that down would be really difficult. So what Runway does for you, it automatically includes the images in between that would be needed to slow your image down. And that's really powerful if you wanted to uh, slow something down. And you can see here what it can do for you. Make images move, this is quite neat as well. If you have a particular image and you just want to give them some enhancement through a motion, you simply generate the uh, video movement there. Um, a lot of uh, videos and certainly, or rather a lot of video tools certainly have a facility to exclude the background. And of course, running ML, ML is no different. It's also able to remove your background. Simply clicking on your foreground, it will automatically remove the background for you. So that's Runway ML. A tool that is really great is Eleven Labs. So similar to Descript, where we're talking about voices and giving it text, you can chain um, the Eleven Labs with your own voice. And in fact, you, if you want to, you can use um, predefined or voice from the voice library. <laughs> See, you can use predefined voices. So what I've just done here is I've just extracted a <laughs> excuse me. I've just extracted a short paragraph on artificial intelligence, and we have some pre-made voices here. And I'm just going to go and say generate the actual. <laughs> generate the content for me. Artificial intelligence, AI, refers to the simulation of human intelligence in machines that are programmed to think, learn, and perform tasks that typically require human intelligence. 
It is a multidisciplinary field that encompasses various branches of computer science, including machine learning, natural language processing, computer vision, and robotics. So there you go. It was simple as that to take this piece of text and turn it into some audio. And I, th I think the audio is really, really good just as it was. But you can also then go and change the settings. So you can change the stability. You can change the clarity. And you can play with the settings until such time as you think it gives us the right tone or feeling to that particular content that you want to. As I mentioned, there are some uh, libraries or there are some libraries. So if you want to use a particular style of voice, which they don't have in the preset, you can do it. So here's a sample. Uh, Wayne, who's a cool, calm and deep voice. You can't blame gravity for falling in love. I think this would be ideal if you uh, have a long book that you want to um, put out into audio. This is quite, <laughs> quite a great example of a voice to use. So that's another one. We have 11 labs. What I want to show you now is going on to the um, imagery where we start creating images and uh, specifically around images, not yet a video. I've already shown you how to create the video, but this is now really high quality, high level imagery. And shortly after ChatGPT was launched, we had uh, Mid Journey and Dal E come out and Stable Diffusion. Those were the three sort of heavy hitters with regards to image creation. And everyone was going absolutely nuts. So they thought, well, they could create their content through ChatGPT and create any imagery through either one of those tools. So I'm going to show you what those tools can and can't do. And they've improved, certainly in the last six to eight months, they've improved substantially. They are mostly on a tool called Discord. So you would need to have a Discord account. Discord is free. You just go and log on and create a free account. And you can then get access um, through to these different tools by going onto the website and registering on their Discord server. So I'm going to stop this share and I'm then going to share the Discord. So here now is the Discord, and I'm just going to move it. Are we still seeing the Discord, are we? Tamron? Okay. So <clears throat> over here, we have a whole host of different um, channels that we can go and create images, and we create the images via prompts. And a prompt is really just saying, okay, computer, this is what I want, and this is how I want it to look. Um, and in fact, there is new there is a new um, job profile called a prompt engineer now. Whether it's creating prompts for something like ChatGPT or whether it's creating a prompt for imagery, there is now a job since people actually sit and create these prompts. If you want this type of content or image, this is the type of prompt that you should be using. So we can see here, this particular prompt was cozy looking anime girl playing retro games uh, under neo, uh, neon lights using 90s Japanese pop art style. So this is the image that was created. So if we bring this up, there's the image automatically created from just from that prompt. What you can do, and this has only happened literally in the last couple of weeks, where we can now start enhancing that particular image. So we can say, okay, show me something to the right. This image is a little, I've just got this image, but I want some more content to the right. So you click the right arrow and it then goes and creates something like that. So you can see now this was the original image and it's tacked on this side here. And you can then go and say, okay, I like this one with a little bit of um, sort of a, a laptop, you can see it looks like she's looking there. This one looks quite good. That's the one I'm going to use. Similarly, what I did here, similar image, similar prompt. What I did here is say, well, I want to actually zoom out. So you simply click on zoom out. And what it then does, it goes and creates the images for you on a zoom out level. So all this content around the outside it is now created for you. So you can see, for example, you can see her feet. Uh, over here, you can't because it's created, I don't know, some a keyboard with like a thousand keys on it. Um, 
but essentially it's expanded or zoomed out of that image for you. Once you're happy with that particular image, it's quite simple. You then go and say, that's the image I want, and you can then download it. So to give you an idea, these are just some of the images that I've created in the past. Uh, I created this image here, and I thought this was absolutely fantastic. And I, in fact, currently my uh, wallpaper, because I really love it. And obviously coming from Dragon Consulting, I thought it was quite apt to have a really cool dragon. Um, came Christmas last year, we thought, okay, well, let's have something cool for Christmas. So we were looking for little Christmas dragons, and we were playing around with these. So there is a lot that you can do with regards to creating different imagery. And there are a number of tools. Midjourney is just one. There is another one called Leonardo.ai. And there's the other one that I mentioned, Stable Diffusion. They all operate on the same way. You give it a prompt of whatever you want to do, and you start learning what sort of prompts create what sort of image and it will automatically generate that uh, imagery for you. So I'm now going to stop that. I'm just keeping an eye on time. So I'm going to stop that, and I'm going to share again. Uh, let's make sure that I'm sharing the right one. This one. Still sharing the sound. Right. So... <clears throat> You can see the chat GPT, Cameron. Cool. So this is the inference uh, chat GPT. If someone hasn't used it, uh, chat GPT is free to use. Um, there are two current versions. There's 3.5 and version 4. Version 4 is really a paid for version. Uh, it's supposedly 100 times more powerful than the 3.5 version. The, major drawback with ChatGPT, however, is it only goes up to um, 2021 with regards to context. So anything newer, if you ask who is the President of the United States or who owns Twitter, uh, it'll give those answers incorrectly. But you can essentially ask it a question. So I can ask is what does he equal mc2 mean and will go ahead and then give me the answer as to what that um, equation means. You can ask it to give you bullet points um, and content writers use it. We use it as well. We say, please give us an idea or give us suggestions, etc. And it'll go ahead and give you those suggestions for you. What you need to be careful of, and you might think, well, this is fantastic. I, I can use ChatGPT now to create my blogs, which have been an absolute pain because I don't know how to write blogs. The issue with doing that is there are applications out there that can identify uh, any content that has been created, whether it's created by a human or whether it's created by an AI uh, bot and you simply give it the content, it will go through it and determine and say, hang on, this is 30% um, human or this is 90% human, depending on obviously where the content has come from. So be careful of just assuming that the content that you have is perfect and you can use it. What we suggest you do is when you create the content, one, give it an idea, to give you high levels of bullet points or ideas, and you then expand on that in your own um, voice. Uh, specifically for websites, it's important that you continue your own voice that you have in your website, um, because you start giving the idea of the feeling who you are. So when people come to your website, they start learning about who you are, who your organization is from the content and the way the content is written. If we have a look at this particular tool here, Chatsonic. Chatsonic has in fact been around since 2020, uh, 20, yeah, 2020. So it has been around two years longer than ChatGPT and it's kind of been flying under the radar. And what it can do, it does, it operates pretty much the same way as ChatGPT, but it has two big advantages. One, it's able to uh, pick up 
imagery within the actual chat itself. So you can create images within chat, chat GPT can't. And it also has up-to-date information. It doesn't have the restriction that chat GPT does. Similarly, if I look at another tool, a chat tool, and this one is barred. And if you look at the URL at the top there, this is Google's uh, attempt to compete with chat GPT. It operates very much in the same way. You have option here, you can type in content and we'll actually start uh, creating the, the content for you. What uh, M Microsoft have done with their Edge component is they have built in the um, GPT option right into their browser. So you have your results on the one side and you have the actual um, GPT version or answer coming through on the right hand side for those who want to use Edge. <clears throat> This is a great tool for those people who uh, want to have a website, don't have a website, have no idea what a website is and have a very limited budget. You can actually generate your website literally within seconds. You come to this website called Durable. <clears throat> you come here and say, okay, I want to create a website. What is a website for? Let's say it's for, oh, there we go, landscape. It's a landscaping website. What's the name? Um, uh, best Roses. Okay, that's the name of my website. It now goes ahead, <clears throat> says, okay, uh, it's about landscaping. That's the title. It'll go ahead and start creating the entire website for you, <clears throat> including imagery, including the content. You can, of course, go in and then edit any part of that content. You can see it's already including services as well. So it's included in the service section. It also, in fact, goes in and includes uh, testimonials. It includes, uh, there we go, within literally a minute, it's completed the website. So here it is. There's our full-blown website. Given a nice image there about Best Roses, it says all about Best Roses, these are our services, garden design, lawn maintenance, irrigation, uh, a testimonial there, the gallery of our services includes a map, it's picked up that we're in um, Joburg, so it's put me right by the Bowling Green, fantastic, it's across the road from the uh, Zulag Hub. Um, <clears throat> so there you go, it's put in a form there, it's created within one minute, it's created a functional website for you. If you now want to go and customize that, you can then click on customize. It is a paid for version if you want, then want to customize anything. But that's really, if you have no idea how to create a website, you need something really, really simple, uh, just to have some presence, this is one way to do it. This here is a video that I'm going to run on Microsoft's what we call a co-pilot. So this is not really available yet, but this is coming up. But this is give you an idea where AI is going with regards to business and how it's starting to assist businesses across a whole host of different uh, applications and applications that they use. So I'm going to run this now. It is only one minute and 36 seconds.
that's coming up from uh, Microsoft. It is available in uh, certain um, organizations at the moment for trial. Um, but you can see Guys, some of the stuff that they're doing there is absolutely amazing. For example, the um, Excel, where you just dump in a whole lot of data and you say, well, give me some output, you know, what does this data actually mean? And it'll come back and tell you and start creating graphs for you, et cetera. So you can understand information. You don't have to sit there and, and try and make it out yourself. Um, and you saw the other things that created, like ChatGPT would create content for an announcement or broadcast or presentation as Tome would created a presentation for you. So all of this um, AI technology is coming together within the Microsoft stable. If we go to a, a website called Future Tools for anyone who may be interested, Future Tools is a great little repository um, of all the tools that could possibly be found, or a lot of, I should say, a lot of the tools that could be found out there for um, use. So you can say, well, I'm looking for AI detection, or I'm looking for a chat tool, or I'm looking for a copywriting tool, and I'm looking for a free, a freemium, depending on what your criteria is, and it will go through and suggest. And you can then select a particular uh, topic that you want to uh, find and list all the tools for you. And you have 1,907 tools. The last little video I want to show, and this is a really um, interesting video and perhaps a little scary one, give you some background here. So OpenAI created a, a little test with AI where they have two um, AI teams competing against each other. One team is the seeker and the other, teams, uh, other team is the, the hiders. And the seekers need to find the hiders simply by having direct view to them. Um, the, Video explains really how it works, but you'll see then how AI starts adjusting and learning. This is all built within uh, AI. Dear fellow scholars, this is Two Minute Papers with Karo Jolnai Fahir. In this project, OpenAI built a hide and seek game for their AI agents to play. While we look at the exact rules here, I will note that the goal of the project was to pit two AI teams against each other and hopefully see some interesting emergent behaviors. And boy, did they do some crazy stuff. The coolest part is that the two teams compete against each other, and whenever one team discovers a new strategy, the other one has to adapt. Kind of like an arms race situation, and it also resembles generative adversarial networks a little. And the results are magnificent, amusing, weird. You'll see in a moment. These agents learn from previous experiences and to the surprise of no one, for the first few million rounds, we start out with pandemonium. Everyone just running around aimlessly. Without proper strategy and semi-random movements, the seekers are favored and hence win the majority of the games. Nothing to see here. Then, over time, the hiders learn to lock out the seekers by blocking the doors off with these boxes and started winning consistently. I think the coolest part about this is that the map was deliberately designed by the OpenAI scientists in a way that the hiders can only succeed through collaboration. They cannot win alone and hence they are forced to learn to work together, which they did quite well. But then something happened. Did you notice this pointy doorstop shaped object? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Well, probably. And not only that, but about 10 million rounds later, the AI also discovered that it can be pushed near a wall and be used as a ramp and ta-da, got him. The seeker started winning more again. So the ball is now back on the court of the hiders. Can you defend this? If so, how? Well, these resourceful little critters learned that since there is a little time at the start of the game, when the seekers are frozen, apparently during this time they cannot see them, so why not just sneak out, steal the ramp and lock it away from them? Absolutely incredible. Look at those happy eyes as they are carrying that ramp. And you think it all ends here? No, 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 not even close. It gets weirder, much weirder. When playing a different map, 
the seeker has noticed that it can use a ramp to climb on the top of a box and this happens. Do you think couch surfing is cool? Give me a break. This is box surfing. And the scientists were quite surprised by this move as this was one of the first cases where the seeker AI seems to have broken the game. What happens here is that the physics system is coded in a way that they are able to move around by exerting force on themselves, but there is no additional check whether they are on the floor or not because who in their right mind would think about that. As a result, something that shouldn't ever happen does happen here. And we are still not done yet. This paper just keeps on giving. A few hundred million rounds later, the hiders learned to separate all the rams from the boxes. Dear fellow scholars, this is proper box surfing defense. Then lock down the remaining tools and build a shelter. Note how well rehearsed and executed this strategy is. There is not a second of time left until the seekers take off. I also love this cheeky move where they set up the shelter right next to the seekers and I almost feel like they are saying, yeah, see this here? There is not a single thing you can do about it. In a few isolated cases, other interesting behaviors also emerge. For instance, the hiders learn to exploit the physics system and just chuck the ramp away. After that, the seekers go, what? What just happened? But don't despair. And at this point, I would also recommend that you hold on to your papers because there was also a crazy case where a seeker also learned to abuse a similar physics issue and launch itself exactly onto the top of the hiders. Man, what a paper. This system can be extended and modded. So there we go. That's the main um, idea or concept behind this little experiment. And you first watch it and you think, wow, well, that's actually quite amazing. But if you think about it a little bit longer, you start realizing, well, where is this going to go and where is it going to end? All right, guys, I think that's uh, the end for me, and I've got a couple of minutes left. Um, so if there are any questions, one, I hope you guys enjoyed it, um, found it informative. I'm sure a lot of you have already played with perhaps one or two of these tools I've shown. If not, um, all the links will be provided. Go in there, have fun, try them out, test them. A lot of them are free or have free versions. Um, a lot of them are unfortunately paid for if you want to get into the the real nitty gritty of it. So any questions? That was amazing, uh, Rob. I think that last video just scared the hell out of me, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> very clever, but my goodness, that's scary. Um, it, yep. uh, I have put Rob's contact details in the chat as well for anyone wanting to get directly in, in contact with Rob and, and chat about the different AI options out there, particularly for marketing. Um, but uh, I, I, before anyone else puts their hand up, uh, Rob, I'd actually love to ask you, someone mm -hmm. who's new to to this you know so many amazing tools you you've shown us a whole bunch of them today and they're all really amazing what they can do for your business and how they can save you time um but where would you suggest we start because there are so many so what would you say is a good one for a small business owner who wants to save the most amount of time what would you recommend i i think um, certainly for a um, business owner wanting to um, create content, whatever that content is, whether it's sales brochures, whether it's for a website, whether it's presentations, proposals, all that kind of thing. I think uh, certainly Jack, uh, Chat GPT would be the first port of call. Um, 3.5 is free. You go in there and you uh, play around with it. So for me, Chat GPT would be the first first place to start. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I am. Um... I must say, I have also played uh, uh, because I've got a Windows machine. So I've played with the Bing Bing chat. That's also very, it's amazing yes. what these things can help with if you just ask yep. them a question. Um, yep. Really yep. fascinating. Yep. Um, does the, the, Bing, the Bing, as I was saying earlier, sorry, Tamil, mean, the Bing, as I was saying earlier, um, is actually incorporated into Edge. Um, yes. So yeah. when you go, if you load your Edge browser, Bing will come up and do its own little bit there. 
Yeah, I don't normally use Edge to be honest, but uh, with the Windows um, machine now, they've got the little quick quick launch for Bing yes, Chat specifically, yes, yep, which then yes. obviously opens Edge. Yep, um, yep. But yeah, so I, I've asked it some some good questions so far actually, and had some really good <laughs> help <laughs> in creating content. So very helpful. Uh, Vupi, you put on your your um, video. Do you have a question for Rob? Uh, yes, um, Rob, uh, I'm in the paper business. So chat or AI, um, how can I use that to for the longevity of, of my company? Because obviously oh, you, with you... AI, paper is disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think when you say you're in the paper business, what, what, what specifically do you do in the paper business? Well, printing paper, you know, printing you pr documents and... Yeah. Um, yeah, I must be honest, the the option there, I think, with regards to what you are printing, you, you can now start providing, and I'm thinking off the top of you giving me a couple mm -hmm. of seconds here. Um, I think you can now create, because what's happened in the past, quite typically, I would imagine, is people would come to you and say, please print this, right? So you have whatever yeah. artwork, et cetera, they would want to print. Now you can give them a service. You have a, you want something printed, but not sure what, come to me and discuss it with me. I'll create that for you. And then if you're happy with that, then we'll print it for you. Um, so you can use, for example, you can use the mid journey to create logo. So you can go in and create a logo. Um, and you say, well, is this the type of logo that you're looking for? Once you have that, you can then, uh, edit because it does require some uh, editing you can then go and edit the logo and you now created a logo for them which you can then print or a business card you can say give me what a business card would look like give me a layout of a business card and give me different examples you can say these are the different examples of business card layouts for you um you know have a look at these and tell me what you think and which one you want me to print for you so that's okay. off the top of my head that uh, certainly could help you and the lawyers and um, attorneys and that, lawyers, attorneys, accountants, you think what, they'll go towards chat, uh, uh, well, chat GDP? Uh, 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 yeah, uh, um, <laughs> you talk about lawyers <laughs> going towards chat GPT. There is a case of an attorney using chat GPT's result in a case, um, which was a non-existent case, and he got found out. Um, and actually now runs the risk of being debarred because he did exactly that. He he used ChatGPT and took ChatGPT at Gospel. And obviously, uh, as I sort of hinted earlier, you need to go and check what it is that ChatGPT uh, presents. No, and you need he to didn't. do your research to go yeah, to confirm what Yeah, he didn't. What's and on. unfortunately, it said, you know, Mary versus... Joe, and unfortunately, there, there was no such case. Um, so, yeah, he's in trouble. Um, for accountants, very definitely, you saw the simple example of Excel um, there, where you can now, you know, the accountant can say, okay, here's the data sheet. Give me this and this report, and it'll go and spit it out for you. Okay, so, yeah. so it's helping accountants, but it yeah, really yeah. need to be yeah. wary. <laughs> it, it, I think it even... Can, it, even... Sorry, Rob, even the accountants need to be wary, you know, um, I think with all of these things, we need to remember that it's it's very, very clever, but it's still just a machine at this point. Um, and it's using resource, it's, it's pooling information from resources, that doesn't mean it's pulled it correctly. So if you know your your uh, field, like accounting, mm. double yes. check the results, <laughs> like law, double check the results before you go sharing them with a the client. But I think it's a great way to save time. No, no, definitely. Yep. I see Michelle is nodding her head all the <laughs> way. So, I'll um, say, Vimpy, one of the, the best things that we use it for is, is to get ideas. Um, okay, so yeah. the client approaches you with a specific topic or if I've got to prepare a training program and you go, what are the, the, in your role as a marketing trainer, what are the top 10 things you think people should know about X, Y, and Z? And then mm. you get those top things, then you go do your research and actually put your stuff together. 
Um, but you can't take it on face value and you have to tweak it to be your personality. But it works for generating ideas when you've got writer's block. It's an awesome thing. That, that's what I was thinking about chat uh, GDP, as, as, as Rob said. Um, so yep. yeah, obviously, you know, you have to do your research and do your fact finding and all of that just to cover yep. your basis. Yep. I see there's a question from uh, Mark. Um, uh, do you have any meeting? Sure. Do you have any meeting transcription summary AI recommendations? Um, nowadays, there uh, is, in fact, there are a couple tools which uh, you could use to join a meeting and it will automatically um, take basically a recording of that meeting and then transcribe it for you. Um, I must be honest, I've never used one of those. I'm, I'm pretty sure they would be able to summarize the meeting for you. If they don't, you take the transcription and you dump it into ChatGPT and it'll summarize the meeting for you. So ho hopefully that answers your question. Um, what are the security risks associated with using AI? So um, let me, before I cover the security risks, I think one of the major things that is coming up um, time and time again now, specifically in the image um, creation side, is the imagery that is created is created based on existing content, and that's how AI learns. And that's what the algorithm does. It goes and looks at existing content and creates imagery from that. And what is now sort of popping up the question around, well, who does that content belong to? So if you are a Picasso and you now have someone who says, create a picture of my living room using Picasso style art, um, who does that IP belong to? Does it belong to Picasso or does it belong to the person who's now created that? And, and th those questions are starting being asked. Um, they haven't really come to fall with regards to a, a final result as to, yeah, well, it's it's changed enough away from Picasso's style to you know be your own or no, hang on, because it was um, created off Picasso as a result uh, it belongs to Picasso. So there, there is a, a risk certainly there from using some types of AI. Um, I'm not sure with regards to a security risk. Um, most of the content that is out there, and Google have in fact just updated their um, terms and conditions to say that any content that you put out there in the public domain um, is available for being used within their AI. So if you're going to put it out into the public, uh, certainly, um, you know, understand that that's what you, you're putting out at risk, um, that that information will become, whether it's out just to Joe Soap to pick up or an AI to pick up and use. Um, on the other side, of course, um, AI is also being used to prevent um, security threats to prevent uh, fraud and things like that to you know be able to detect it, but at the same time, um, you know, clever um, thieves are no longer you know big brawly men with ha jackhammers and guns. They now sit behind uh, typewriters and keyboards, or rather keyboards and typewriters. Giving my age away, uh, keyboards and then able to create programs that can get into certain applications and steal money. That that's always there. So it's a cat and mouse game all the time. I hope that answers that question or some of it. Um, any other questions that I could uh, perhaps answer someone or someone wants to ask while I run through the comments? I think you've covered all the ones that were in the chat, Rob. Thank you. Um, I think all, all of us are, are actually just overwhelmed by what is out there at the moment and how clever it is. So <laughs> uh, that is why I put your contact details in the chat. I hope everybody saved them because if you think of, of uh, queries later, you are very welcome to get hold of Rob and, yep. and ask for his assistance in, in, uh, in getting it all sorted. And of course, uh, Dragon Consulting will help you with your marketing strategy on a whole and your business strategy. So they're worth chatting to either way, whether it's about AI or not. Um, but if there aren't any more questions, Rob, I just want to say thank you so much. 
for um, being here today and for sharing so much knowledge with us so freely. I really appreciate it and making it easy to understand as well. well I hope that I did make it easy to understand because uh, unfortunately I, I get quite carried away with technology. I, I get excited by technology. So sometimes it, it may go over someone's head and if it has, I, I must apologize. Uh, I, I didn't do any of these applications that I showed you today. Um, credit, to be honest, they, I was just touching on them um, because obviously the limited time. But uh, yeah, um, if anyone has any more questions, you have my email address. Uh, I see you've listed the COSA address. It's either robertdragonconsulting.coza or robertdragonconsulting.biz. Um, and yeah. Pop us a mail if you want to chat about your, your business specifically, both Michelle and I, um, we certainly help businesses, whether it's just a process point of view or you're wanting marketing. We not only uh, focus on marketing, we focus on strategy and marketing is certainly a, a key point in that. But um, yeah, we look at your businesses as a whole and obviously technology and, and AI can be part of that. Thank you so much, Rob. Thank you. I, just, I see there's so many thank yous in the chat, everyone. Obviously, I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I really did. Yep. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who came and attended. It, it was. Um, I'm quite overwhelmed by everyone's um, attendance. So that's fantastic. Thank you all. And uh, those who weren't, if you could send out, you know, thanks from from myself and Michelle um, to those who did attend, but obviously aren't here now. Just thank you for for sticking around and. Uh, being interested in something that I'm passionate about. <laughs> yes, you showed how passionate you were. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for attending. I think Michelle put it really well. She said, time well spent, and that's what it was. So uh, to everyone, have a wonderful rest of your Thursday and enjoy your weekend. And thank you for joining the Business Builder this month. Goodbye. Bye-bye, all.